With increasingly more resources online for computer science and data science, more and more people choose the path to self-learn data science. So how to building your own curriculum to learn data science in spare time? Project-based learning is a good starting point. It works best for people already have some technical background, but also want to dive deeper into the building blocks of data science. It highlights the rationale of learning each pieces of content and provides a bird-eye view of how each little pieces tie together to form the big picture. For example, a typical data science or machine learning project comprises the life cycle, from defining the objectives, data pre-processing, exploratory data analysis, feature engineering, model implementation to model evaluation. Each phase requires different skill sets, including statistics, programming, SQL, data visualization, mathematics, and business knowledge. Let's break down the data science lifecycle into five steps and we will see how each step connects to various knowledge domains. The first step of a data science project is to identify the business problem and define the objectives of an experiment design or model deployment. At this stage, it doesn't need technical skill yet but requires business understanding to identify the problem and define the objectives. First to understand the domain-specific terminology appeared in the dataset, then to translate a business requirement to a technical solution. It requires years of experience in the field to build up your knowledge. Harvard Business Review, HubSpot, Investopedia, TechCrunch are great websites that can increase your exposure to some business domains. After defining the problem, then it is to frame it into a data science solution. This starts with the knowledge in experiment design which falls under the domain of statistics, including topics of hypothesis testing, sampling, bias variances trade-off, different types of errors, overfitting and underfitting. There are various types of hypothesis testing to explore, t-test, ANOVA, chi-square test. Machine learning is fundamentally considered as a hypothesis testing process, where we need to search for a model in the hypothesis space that best fits our observed data and allows us to make prediction to unobserved data. I have listed down useful online resources to improve your skills in each domain, in the articles provided in the description. The second step is data extraction and data pre-processing, this to collect data from various sources and transform the raw data into digestible format. SQL is a powerful language for communicating with and extracting data from structured database. Learning SQL also assists with framing a mental model that helps you to generate insights through data querying techniques, such as grouping, filtering, sorting, and joining. You will also find similar logics appearing in other languages, such as Pandas and SAS. DataQuest and DataCamp are great websites for learning SQL basics. It is essential to get comfortable with a programming language while learning data science. The simple syntax makes Python a relatively easy language to start with for data extraction. Pandas library is almost unavoidable if you use Python for data extraction. It transforms database into data frame, a table-like format that we are most familiar with. Pandas also plays an important role in data pre-processing when it is required to examine and handle following data quality issues, such as address missing data, transform inconsistent data type, remove duplicated value. The third step is data exploration, also known as EDA exploratory data analysis, which reveals hidden characteristics and patterns in a data set. It is usually achieved by data visualization and followed by feature engineering to transform data based on the outcome of data exploration. Data exploration used descriptive statistics to summarize characteristics of the dataset, like mean, median, mode, range, variance, standard deviation, correlation, covariance, skewness, distribution. After a solid understanding of the dataset characteristics, we need to apply the most appropriate feature engineering techniques accordingly. For instance, use log transformation for right skewed data and clipping methods to deal with outliers. Here are some common feature engineering techniques, including categorical encoding, scaling, log transformation, imputation, feature selection. Combining statistics and data visualization allows us to understand the data through appropriate visual representation. 
No matter whatever tools you choose for data visualization, it's essential to distinguish the use case of common chart types like bar chart, histogram, box plot, heat map, scatter plot, and line chart. After all of the preparation so far, it's finally the time to dive deeper into model implementation and machine learning algorithms. Scikit-learn is a powerful Python library that allows beginners to get started in machine learning easily. It offers plenty of built-in package and we can easily implement a model using several lines of code. Although it has already done the hard work for us, it is still crucial to understanding how the algorithms operate behind the scene and be able to distinguish the best use case for each. Generally, machine learning algorithms are categorized into supervised learning and unsupervised learning. Some popular algorithms to start with are Logistic regression, linear regression, support vector machine, decision tree, neural network, PCA and clustering. I have created practical guides for some machine learning algorithms. If you are interested, check out the link in the description. Another essential skills for model implementation is mathematics, but why do we need math in data science? As a beginner, math knowledge mainly assists in understanding the underlying theory behind the algorithms. Moving forward, when we no longer rely on built-in libraries for machine learning models, it allows us to develop and optimize customized algorithms. Additionally, hyperparameter tuning also requires advanced math knowledge for searching the best model that minimize the cost function. This is when more complicated math topics come into place, such as linear algebra, calculus, gradient descent, searching algorithms, and optimization problem. Last step is to evaluate the model performance. Inferential statistics is particularly useful when making model prediction and evaluating model performance. As opposed to descriptive statistics, inferential statistics focuses on generalizing the pattern observed in the sample data to a wider population. It provides evidence of which features have high importance in making inference. Also, it determines the model performance based on evaluation metrics. For example, for classification problem where the output are discrete categories, some common metrics are confusion matrix, type 1 error and type 2 error, accuracy, ROC and AUC. Whereas, for regression problem where the output are continuous numbers, some common metrics are R squared, root mean squared error, RMSE, mean absolute error, MAE, mean squared error, MSE. YouTube channel 3 Blue 1 Brown and Cons Academy provides amazing tutorials for statistics and math. Hope you find this video helpful. And please like and subscribe if you'd like more contents like this. Thanks for watching.